over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. So, um, how y'all want to go with this? Y'all been feeling the Top Rank series? Um, in a, yeah, in a way, like, I mean, it was great to actually get boxing back on, you know, back on TV. Because there's only so many reasons that we watch. Oh, someone ordering something? Yeah, apparently, uh, uh P had to return the chili cheese fries. <laughs> they, they got cold. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, you know. So, uh, so yeah, though. Yeah, the top rank cities, uh, top rank cities have. I mean, they've been they've been watchable for the most part. Like nothing. I mean, it, it depends. Like I mean, obviously they get a bad rap because top rank is one of those is because uh, love boxing has a lot of um, promotional loyalties per se among their fans. So more than bow wow. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, most people are like top rank. Oh, yeah, top rank. Ooh, you know. They're, they're, so they brought, like, you know, they're like, oh yeah, um, yeah. I'm not gonna watch this. But obviously, if you're a hardcore box fan who actually missed watching boxing, you watched it. And for the most part, I mean, for the six weeks or whatever so that it was on, you know, we got some, you know, we got some good to decent boxing. You know, I, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna complain. But and then like and and some then, upsets. Yeah, and then obviously you saw the challenges. Right. That, you know, with COVID. Nigga, I'm not gonna complain at all. We got, we're getting boxing. Like the fuck. Yeah. I mean, tell that to your fellow hardcore fans, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah, 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 we definitely got some upsets. You know, we got upsets. We got a fight of the year contender. We had some fuckery. We had, you know, we had some. Um, we had a UFC fighter become a sensation in boxing. A part-time MMA fighter become a sensation, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, that Clay Collard, and we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that dude in probably some other podcasts, um, you know, and, you know, like, overall, overall, like, I mean, some of them ran a little bit long, though, because I know LB, you know, too if, damn you have, long. if you have too many of those prelim fights, though, you know, it's a, it, it can get a little long, I, I know there was one, there was one card that was, like, almost fucking three, three and a half hours, you know, so shit was crazy. <laughs> yeah, you got to be having some fantastic fights for a fucking three and a half hour card. Word. I think I just gave you a bunch of mid. <laughs> you know, and then the last, and so the last card in this in the series, you know, was you know, main event by Jason Valdez. You know, and uh, before, you know, before we talk about that fight, um, hey, you can't had, mute that shit, bro. Like, I'm about to go into the store, nigga, and, and ask for a refund. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm home. I'm home. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and, I'm going to the kitchen then. Shit. <laughs> you know, and you know, but before we go into that fight, though, we had Isaac Dogbay who actually made his return back. He was the opener. You know, that's Chris Alvarez. And uh, Elby, what'd you think about Dogbay's performance in that opening fight? He improved. Um, I like how he got. I, I like how he kind of paid attention to the defense. Yep. And he was being more cognizant of, you know working his way inside and slipping when he throws certain punches like the jab to the body or right. the counter hook mm-hmm. and, and like, like like me and Keith Soprano like we be like texting like messing each other back and forth like when all this shit be going on and I like how he still kept the ferocity with the, the follow through on his punches right exactly. a lot of exactly. a lot of guys get beat down, down a little bit or they get you know or, you know, when they take a loss, they they kind of get they don't come back with that that same fire. Like Dog Bay, he was throwing with some fire, so I, I appreciated that. Um, overall, I thought he did good. Um, I didn't like that bullshit ass fucking point deduction by that damn um. Yep. You you know his name, bro. Mora. Yeah. Mora. Yeah, like that guy. That guy. Nothing. Nothing more to be said. I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna say yeah. that. I hate that guy. Trash. Yeah. Yeah, but at least Dog Bay, but Dog Bay was at least able to get him out of there in the final round. Like, you know, because because I know LB, I was telling you, it was like LB. I, mean, I was like, Dog, like Dog Bay just needs to step on the gas just a little bit. You know, he's boxing. He still so. didn't though. Like, he was still looking for one shot, and then when he got it, the ref was just like, "Ah, right, you know what? Fucking, we good. We, we see it." <laughs> 
you know. So I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how Dog Bay moves at featherweight. But for now, like I was, but now I mean, it, it's a great performance. I mean, as long as he stays away from Navarrete, you know. That Dog was because I, I was gonna say that um, because I I was I was texting LB about that. I was like, you know, Dog Bay looked very good, and I was surprised because I I was sure that after those two brutal fights look shop worn but he didn't look shop worn at all he looked very sharp and then i said that maybe 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 i just didn't realize that navarate was just a bad matchup for him stylistically yeah you know i mean he's tall he's a volume puncher he punches hard you know, it was like yeah it, it, yeah he, he was he was at a disadvantage size wise and and probably like if, if and i don't think they should never, they should never fight each other unless it makes sense well, I mean, LB, LB also said, LB also even said that, you know, he made a good point of, to me, that he fought the wrong fight when he fought Navarrete. So maybe it would play out differently if he fought smarter, but even then, Navarrete just has a lot of advantages on him. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to get, I think he has uh, a better trainer, a better trainer now. See, he wasn't really, he was rushing into Navarrete a lot. Yeah, you're strong. You're strong. You're into the fire. Yeah, like you can't just do that shit. You gotta. You don't want to get like he was making the mistakes Valdez was making in the damn main event. Really, but no. just against a more dangerous opponent. Right. Yeah, you gotta. You know, you gotta work your way in there. Kind of like how Brian Jennings was doing against uh, Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. You gotta have a high guard. Move your head. You know, back him up. Like I feel like Dog Bay might do better against Navarro Navarrete later on, but he already lost twice, so there's no need to go down that route unless you know he really you know, gets to the top again and kills it. And it's like, hmm, you know what? Maybe they can fight again. Right. <laughs> but other than that, I'm I'm good. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, hopefully, like that you know, I mean, I, hopefully that Doug Wade does make a comeback that's like that's entertaining though to watch. And he's entertaining, to, he's definitely entertaining to watch. Um, and then also, too, I know we had and one of the things that I thought was funny about about the whole card was top rank seems to be one to be pushing, trying to find who's the next Puerto Rican sensation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, they, they, they were going crazy. It was, um, was it Edgar Berlanga? You know, it's like they're like, is he? I mean, the week before it was with um, the he who should not be named because you know P was a former stan of his. <laughs> you know, uh, and, you can say wait, 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 wait. Ver, Ver, Verdejo did his thing, bro. Like, yeah, you can say his name. He was supposed to do it, but we right. didn't expect it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and so like then now they go from him to Berlanga. Um, so and then they, they have to play, oh Berlanga ended all his fights in the first round. You know, he's this is oh, he's gonna make it like fourteen or you know, fifteen you know. You know and like they get you know, they get him in there. And uh Keith, what did you think of Berlanga's performance? Man, I thought he had some power. Like some real power with that right hook, and um, he knocked my man right on his ass real quick. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real quick. Yeah, Flip. no chance. Yeah, the funny thing is, dude, actually, actually, you know, he he started up like he actually came and started throwing hands with him early. So I'm like, okay, he has a he has a plan. But then once he started feeling them bricks, he cut that shit off quick. You it's know? that Tyson yeah. quote, like in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody got a plan to Yeah, my game. man did push-ups. Yeah, he did push-ups afterwards. Said he didn't uh, fight like he wanted to or he was supposed to. Yeah. He, he, that yeah. nigga's crazy. Yeah, he, he didn't break the sweat. He didn't throw the left hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, they beautiful. They do that for fighters who don't throw the jab. <laughs> In the uppercut. Oh hell yeah! Uppercut was like the most underused part of the night. Yeah, it was. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Damn, see, you see it? What's what's up with you non-boxing ass niggas out there that don't be seeing shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, with Berlanga, you definitely know the power is real. 
But yeah. now we just got to see what he go, what he looks like, and you know, when he faces competition, because that's the like. I can tell you, you know, I heard of Berlanga before he turned pro because he's a he's a fellow New Yorker, so his name was right. buzzing around the, around the scenes, you know, around the amateur scenes. I know a couple of people in, at the gym, I you know, I went to, you know, mentioned his name. So he's been he's been a prospect, you know, in the scene for a bit. He's been pretty talented. He just doesn't have he doesn't have a lot of experience. Like he has very little amateur and pro experience, like both ways. So I don't. Know. Solid though, bro. Like he looks, the, he yeah, he looks the part, though. That's the thing. So he's he's. I think he'll learn as he goes along. He he's pretty. He looks pretty talented, but, but now it's just a matter of you know increasing his comp his his competition. You don't want to bring him along too too you know too Fuck quickly. That. He, he beats Eubanks right now. <laughs> uh, let's not go that far now. Yeah, I'm gonna go that far. Yeah. I'll go that. I'll go. I'll go that far and back. <laughs> I'll, I'll be more afraid if he had to fight collared. <laughs> oh lord, <laughs> bro! <Bruh. laughs> I'm just being real. Yeah, yeah. LB, LB has no respect for that dude. Yeah. No, I respect his effort. You know, shout out to you, man. You know, yeah. great effort. It just, you know, you got you got show boxing skills with that effort. That's that's all. Right. I mean, he in the Mecca of boxing, you know, Florida right now, training with Roy, whatever, or he was. So. Yeah, he was. Yeah, well, who knows? Who knows? I mean, I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll see. If, I mean, eventually, you know, Matchroom will get him a fight, or, or no, excuse me, PBC will get him a fight. So, I mean, you know, we'll we'll see where he goes. I mean, because he does hold, he does hold like an interim middleweight title or some shit like that. Yeah, in the GameStop. Yeah. Yeah, the game's stopped. We ain't counting these fucking um, intermediate, um, beginner, uh, no, regular. Think... Oh, yeah, Master S. Dollar Master. Tree. You know. But I was going to say, back to what I was going to say with Berlanga is, I think he has really, like, I think they're going to really push him because he really has star potential as far as talent and drawing power. Because when I, when we, when we went to that, we, because he was, you know, he was fighting on the other call when we went to the Crawford fight. And Whoa. the crowd was crazy for him. Like, he yeah. has, he's, got, he's cool with that, Joe. His sister's a baddie too, because I, I was sitting by his sister and his, yeah. his sister's mother. Well, I ain't a sister's a baddie, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah. to her. Yeah, no, Belinga, yeah. I, 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 I met you. Belinga's pretty cool. So it's like. Yeah, know. he's humble as fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful fighter. Yeah, so. You want to see him win. Like, the sport needs more like him. Well, but it's just a matter of it's just a matter of now how like I said now it's just the mat let, let the matchmaking take take its toll. But Top Rank is pretty good when it comes to matchmaking with young fighters. They're just too good at it because then they fucking milk the cow dry until it's like okay enough cans let's let's fight some real competition now. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm, but... I'm I'm waiting for a I'm waiting for a, a LB Crawford rep. It's okay. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing to say on that. Like, I feel they're gonna they're gonna have to throw the kid in some fire soon because nobody seems to withstand him. Like, so you're gonna have to get a crafty guy with a chin who's tough. Like, like you, he's gonna they're gonna put him into the deep end sooner than later, bro. I mean, you can't have 14 knockouts and still be on the damn you know, training wheels. Right. Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean, there's there was another fighter who also fought. That you know, has a similar knockout streak, you know. Elvis Rodriguez, you know, the, the, the Dominican kid, you know, that dude is you know, that like seven old with one draw and seven knockouts. I mean, I mean, he's Dominican, enough said. Never yeah. met a Dominican that couldn't punch in or out the ring, right? You know, and he and he and yeah, and then his knockout was a highlight reel. His dude was his dude was sat there, his face was like frozen. Like, you know, that kid was on the camera sitting there with this kid. You know, I mean he, he looked like he saw a ghost. <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. That straight that straight punch was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like I mean that the ref played that shot immediately too. Like he didn't give him a chance to try to recover. The ref you know, dude was in the same position, the ref was just saying, No, nah, this is it. And dude was just lying there, you know, 
you know, with, with the I eat ass face on his, you know, he was fault, he was all fucked up. <laughs> he was half mad in pain, bro. Like, yeah, he was, I said Trevor Burbick Tyson knockout, not Trevor Burbick on Pinkleton Thomas knockout. Yeah, yeah, the person ain't out cold, but you just see the pain. Like, yeah, like you all right? Like, like a nigga that fell off a ladder or some shit. Like, you, you, you see it in his eyes. Like, who yeah. scared you? Who did this to you? Yeah. Who hurt you? <laughs> Yo, and that dude is at okay. and that dude is at one forty two. That dude is big as fuck for one forty. I'm sorry, that, 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 he looked like he was in that fight. Like I, I mean, I don't, I don't see him actually. I mean, if he stays at one forty, I mean, I mean, he'll probably be a contender with him about a couple of years. He Josh Taylor big. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, eh, I don't think. I mean, he's big, but I'm not surprised that he can make weight. Like, I don't know. He's he's sturdy, but I don't know. I, I don't think. Oh, how fucking can he make that weight? Eh, but he's still growing. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but, Time yeah, will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. No, it, but yeah, like I say, it was good to see good face like that. And then, of course, the main event. Oh wait, wait, wait! Oh, Shout out to the the one sided uh, female boxing fight too. That was- oh, oh yeah, that, that, that fight, I didn't. I mean, it was it was good, but and here's what they were women's boxing that they need to make it like men's boxing. Like they need to give them three they, rounds. They need to give them three minute rounds, and they need to not let them wear like fucking eighteen ounce gloves <laughs> or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, so them punches could fly, man. Them them eighteen ounce gloves are heavy as fuck, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I want, you know, I want, I mean, they're great. Like, I want to see some knockouts. I want equal opportunity. I think yeah. in three minute rounds, that would happen regardless of the glove, though, because Shorty, um, uh, Cl- Clavel, yeah, Clavel was, was lighting her up the whole night, right? And then Gonzalez, too, like Gonzalez, I mean, she was, she was having trouble keeping up with her, keeping up with the work rate, but she did tag Clavel a lot. Yeah, yeah, she, she hung in there, but it's like the punches ain't had the same same sharpness to them. It was more like I'm trying, and the other person's like, "Yeah, but I'm doing it." <laughs> and, and that's what you've seen. But you know, that was a decent fight. Like there was really no bad fight of that that night. No, it wasn't. Like yeah, it was, they, they, were, they were all interesting fights. They were all very watchable fights. You know, and. You know, the main event, obviously, as I just mentioned before, you know, with Oscar Valdez, you know, at 130 now against Jason Velez. Uh, now, I, mean, I know we've talked we've talked about Valdez plenty of times on, on our previous podcast. You know, most of us think Valdez is a knockout waiting to happen. And there's a lot of evidence to point to that comment, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because Valdez... Yeah, still undefeated. That's the thing, like... Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, because Valdez, uh, Valdez is, you know, aspires to be, you know, a Mexican Aztec warrior. Like this is like this is this is this is goes way back. Like, you know, dude want dude wants to be, you know, wants to be like one of the legends, you know, like a Mexican legend, you know. So he fights really Mexican. Now it's, this is not a slur, people. I mean, if you follow boxing, you know what I mean when I say fighting Mexican. Yeah, the aggressive Mexican. pressure. Aggressive pressure lets the hands fly. And I know earlier, I mean, earlier in his career, I mean, he, you know, he got into a little trouble. I mean, he got knocked down and everything like that. But, um, you know, he, he did, you know, he, he was able to do his thing. And then, I mean, I, of course, once he actually won the featherweight title, you know, he was doing, um, you know, he had a couple of defenses where, you know, basically head first, swing in Life away, left foot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this shit, yo, yo, Keith, yo. What, what was your impression of Valdez that you saw? <laughs> I, yo, honestly, I felt like um, this might be a ceiling. You know? Yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, it's ceiling because yeah, one, he he should never go above one thirty. That's for damn sure. He, I mean, unless unless he can sure, really even fight. at one thirty, he's gonna struggle. <laughs> yeah, I think Jojo Diaz beats his ass. Uh, I think. Burchell. I think. I think that hurt is him. I, 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 I was, and maybe this is just me being biased because even at 126, I was never all that high in Valdez. But the more time goes by, the more I'm like, this dude is just one fight away from getting a serious whooping. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's wins are like a fighter or, or a punch away from getting yeah. a weapon. <laughs> he really like, he wins, fights like the way the they expect the dog bay to be. Yeah, exactly. And he does it over and over. I mean, like I said, we had. He, I mean, he had the quick fight. He had the Mariaga fight. He had the Savannah fight. These are the three fights that everyone points to for him. That you know, the, that's the reason why that Valdez looks off because he got put through the ringer. And I, and I don't think he's really recovered from the broken jaw from the quick fight or, or the punishment he took. The you Lopez know? fight. Shit, I think I, I was saying for the longest he needs to basically just run that back with Mariaga to get his fucking confidence back. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a win and get your... <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's really not a good idea. <laughs> so some fights, when you when you get away with them and you win, and even if it's clear but it was hard, you just you just let it go. Yeah. Especially if you're one of these guys that just make hard fights, like like you even Aaron Morales, no you know, cause show separation. It just he made entertaining fights. Right. He didn't get his hit as much as Valdez does either. No, he doesn't. And Valdez before, and now in this fight with Velez, like you can, like again, you can see him really struggling with an identity because you know everyone with Valdez, he was with Robles, and then after you know the Robles after the quick fight, you know he switched up and went to Reynoso, which is who's Canelo's trainer. Yeah, and, terrible fit. Yeah, absolutely terrible, terrible fit. fit. Yeah, I just feel like like, and you know I like Reynoso as a coach. But I think he's getting like, he's basically, I think, unfortunately, Canelo's rabid ass stand base is giving him, you know, an extra five point attribute just for being Canelo's trainer. And it's like, eh, like I felt like he, he's trying, like what, what, what he's trying to do, what he's trying to, um, you know, do with, um, um, with Valdez isn't gonna work. They're just not fit for each other. He's not coachable like that. <laughs> it's one fight. No, it's not one. Fight. <laughs> nah, but the thing is, it's like he didn't show any improvement. Like I felt like Dog Bay did more improvement in his one fight yeah. than um, what's his name, Valdez, in like all these fights recently. Right. Yeah, and it's just like, I mean, you see him like he's struggling, like he's trying to be patient or whatever, and you can see that this nigga wants to let his hands fly. And then, Maybe he uh, need to train with dog. Yeah, he was, he like, a lot, he was throwing some wild ass, like, fucking punches that if Velez is going to counter you, now imagine if you have a better fighter in there that will just counter the shit out of you. Like, yeah, yeah because all, I mean, yeah, all Velez was doing, like, Velez was actually walking him down at some points. All he was doing was just walking forward and keeping a jab in his face. And you saw yeah. about his face was all fucking red. Yeah, because I mean, I mean no, no, dis- no disrespect to Velez, but if Valdez is this guy, he's supposed to be able to to beat Velez. He shouldn't have had as much trouble as he had. Yeah, like he had the amount of trouble Ryan Garcia had, and I felt like Ryan Garcia kind of. Like Ryan him Garcia has much less experience than than. Um, than yeah, Valdez, so yeah, I can exactly. understand. The, I I can understand Garcia, um, you know, having a little bit of trouble with Velez, but a guy like like Valdez, who's more seasoned and is considered, you know, a better. Fi- I mean, I don't even think he's a better fighter. Than, he has more. No, even then, Garcia has more potential. But Valdez is more ref- was supposed to be more refined. He's just like, supposed to be better, bro. Let's be honest. Bro. He's supposed to be better. He's supposed but to. He's, be better. I mean, he's better now, but I think Ryan has more potential than Valdez. That's why. I'm, that's that's why I'm. Trying to, that's why I'm trying to phrase it correctly. Because mm-hmm. what Valdez was an Olympian, ain't it? Yeah, he was an Olympian. Yeah, yeah, like once you get to that level, it's like you' supposed to operate on a higher plane, right? And then it, it, it was only it was only when Valdez really started. I think I think decided that he was going to start swinging, like the left hook. When once he starts swinging the left hook and start connecting, that's when the fight started to change a little bit. You, know, you mean after the damn uh, point deduction? Yeah. yeah. Sure. That the fight, well, the whole fight changed after that. Yeah. Like Valdez was like, okay, so plot armor, okay. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah, he, he, needed, he, needed, he needed plot armor to fucking plow oh, forward. Yeah. yeah. Plot armor in the Lopez fight, like nigga always using plot armor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, old, yeah. old game shark ass nigga got always got an extra code. Got to have a ref <laughs> help, some shit. Right, but to his credit, though, I mean, he also 
he also went to Vlesis Bai because Vlesis Bai didn't look like he, I mean, he made weight, but it wasn't like he had like a six pack in that shit, though. So, <laughs> he didn't confidently make weight. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I think Valdez did a, had a good plan at least to, you know, at least go to the body and take some steam out of his punches, which, which did for Valdez. Vlesis did slow up, like, considerably slow up, you know, as the fight got into the later rounds. You know, even, if, even as he was landing the jab, and then, you know, then and then go, then Valdez again let his hands go. You know, left hooks over the place. Velez was almost, yeah, he, he was almost knocked up from the second left hook when he went down. Yeah, because Valdez finally was able to crowd Velez, and that's yeah. how you beat Velez. And you just, you know, like Bradley kept saying the whole game plan. Like Bradley was going off on the damn commentary, like. <laughs> he was damn near sounding disgusted. Like he wanted. I mean, I mean <laughs> that, that's not new though, because Bradley's been a little extra animated recently for no reason. But yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I can't disagree with anything he said though. Like, like Bradley commentary low key be better than Ward, yo. I, I like them both, but they're both annoying in their own rights. Yeah. I, I was saying the other day, I made a comment. I'm like, man, for a man that calls himself the son of God, Ward has way too much pride. He's yeah. so prideful. He does. He oh, yeah. God. And, and the thing that be killing me with his commentary, he yeah. always be wanting the fighters to do shit that he never did his damn self. Exactly. How you, how you talking about, well, yeah, you should, uh, dog, they should really be looking to stop this guy. Nigga, you know how many people you should have fucking stopped? Like, yeah. <laughs> jeez. I mean, dude. I mean, dude's, dude has a fifty percent KO ratio. You shouldn't be talking that shit to nobody about that. Yeah, he, he he takes himself way too seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but Bradley's just annoying for his own. Like they're both. Like I said, they're both annoying in their own right. One is one is really animated and exaggerates way too much. So yes, you're not a Buster Rhymes fan. <laughs> he keeps saying Sometimes. animated, like, in, like the nigga doses. love boxing. <laughs> in, you know, in doses, just re- I don't mind, like, but sometimes just reel it in. He just goes 100 all the time, Bradley. But yeah. I don't know, he just sometimes I feel, like, I feel like that's necessary. Like, you know, I feel, I feel like Teddy was Atlas that frustrating. I feel like Teddy Atlas rubbed off on Bradley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the know. horn fight. It's the horn Pacquiao fight all over again every day for uh, Bradley. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, honestly, I don't think Bradley will ever, you know, surpass that performance because he was he was really on one that day because he was he was drunk and God knows. Bro, he, yo, he was getting near it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like I always thought it was like, damn, like like Bradley about to have to just fight Valdez. It was <laughs> yeah. But but honestly, sometimes I think these guys need that tough love, like. We seen how it worked on um, um that one guy uh was it Dante Jones or somebody earlier in the yeah like in the series yeah it was Dante I'm forgetting his name is it Dante Stubbs something like that then he fought the uh the MMA cat again and yeah so yeah yeah sometimes I think they need that because it's like Valdez and, and this is and this is just to go back to Keith Keith Soprano point. That you know, he we expected so much of Valdez, and he's so skilled, and he has everything you want in a fighter: quick hands, speed, agility, good footwork. But the way he puts it together, it's like his ceiling is low, even with all of that shit. Right. Right. And that's then, who he is now, and it's like it's it's hard to accept somebody for who they who they are when you see him and you see more than that. Right, and he right. and he won the fight. That's the thing. Like he, yeah. <laughs> he ended the fight in the distance. So it's just like, but it was, it was one of those fights that it, you, you just didn't feel good about the win. <laughs> not not when you know they hyping up a Burchell fight, and, and we see how Burchell handled faded guys. Like yeah, you know. He, he, <laughs> Yeah, like, and you're gonna like just that. tee off on them, like damn. Yeah, like all, all, all boxing Twitter, like literally the same thing. Like you, fight, if he fights against against Michelle, like, he's going to sleep. Or he's getting yeah, to say, yeah, we all said that. Like he's he's not gonna win a fight like that. Yeah, hell no. But no, but even. If- oh, he he muted himself. <laughs> As he was no, even even um. Even like not even just Burchell, like Jojo Diaz would whip his ass. Um, yeah. Even even Farmer would beat the shit out of him, like fighting like that. 
Yeah, see. I think Farmer would would give him a, give him some problems. I don't know about beat the shit out of, but but it's just like, give him some problems. Nah, I could see him giving him the red cat treatment. <laughs> and then, and wow, then, damn, I don't know about all of that. And then like, he's supposed he, to give JoJo that treatment. No, no, no. I, mean, I, I I've been I've been guilty of underrating JoJo at times. I'll I'll admit that. But that's not the case with Valdez. And I'm truly not a believer in him at all. So if he fought like that against against Farmer, Farmer would treat him like he did Red Catch. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Jamel Herring, too, and especially Shakur Stevenson. Like, it's probably, I mean, it, it, it's probably good, so, uh, good that Valdez gave up his belt when he was, when Shakur Stevenson was his mandatory. You know, because Shakur would have blanked him or probably would have knocked him out. <laughs> he, he's stuck in now, now. Valdez is stuck in an awkward situation of where does he go from here? Because you can't realistically put him against any of the guys we mentioned him and ask and and expect it to not go all wrong. But you can't just new trainer. Yeah, but yeah. even even in, I mean, I don't even know what new tra- like what trainer would be best for Valdez. I'm trying to think about that. The nigga who getting dog bay right. Uh, what was it, Barry Hunter? Barry Hunter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Similar styles and stature. Like I don't see why not. Like. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it, but it's clear he need he needs a lot of help and. Rushing him into a Brichel fight, and I know you know he's already had like he's had two ups, he had all this shit, but he still should not face Brichel. But because of the WBO's rule, where if you're undefeated and you give up your belt, you go up to a deci- uh, go up to another division, you're like the automatic mandatory for like, like that title, which is. Yeah, he's- but I was I was gonna say you're right, LB. He needs a whole lot of help. But he just seems like Valdez just seems like he's not confident. Like he just seems like a guy that lost confidence in himself. Honestly, maybe I'm being too much of a what do they call it, um, like like too much of a mental like psychiatrist playing the psychiatrist thing. But he just he needs a lot of help. It's that defense. It's like that, that's what I was telling Keith yesterday. Like it's like he's been having the same mistakes in like the last damn stretch of fights <laughs> like that i guess that's who he is man like right the guy that just makes 115 113 type of fights yeah, out he, of he is 118 who, 120 yeah. fights and i saw that comment you made he, he makes those he makes fights harder than they should be mm-hmm. so he, he might just be that guy despite having all that skill and talent and, and attributes he just likes to brawl he likes to brawl a lot Nah, if he liked the brawl, he would have never damn yeah. stayed at the end of the jab. Yeah, nah, for nah. He, he don't like to brawl. He just can't help but fucking get into a brawl because of his deficiencies. Yeah. Because <laughs> the guy who liked the brawl, that, that's more, I feel like Dog Bay is more of a guy who liked the brawl. Yeah, Dog Bay likes to brawl. He was like, fuck it. Like, I don't care if Navarrete is like 6'2". <laughs> Octopus <laughs> arms, raw. <laughs> <laughs> But, but Valdez is like, I don't know, man. This guy, he gave Ryan Garcia a good fight. Let me just oh, chill. <laughs> and like I said, I mean, Valdez had never been stopped before. So, I mean, yes, he gets he gets props for stopping the dude. He gets he props stopped. for stopping him, but he didn't look good at all, even with the stoppage. Because <laughs> yeah. even the stoppage, I felt, could have damn, the yeah. fight could have just ended to the, the could have could have stayed the distance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, Valdez. I mean, I mean, it's definitely into us, Brichelle, and we just hope that he doesn't get hurt in that fight. Yeah, because Burchell is Burchell is prime right now. He is very prime and very dangerous right now. Oh, well, for faded fighters, of course. <laughs> faded, <laughs> faded, and faded. Keep him away from your faded guys. Your, your, you know, <laughs> retirement homes. You know. Yeah. Pensioners, all of them, like stay away from Bell Like, yeah, yeah, he's a, he's basically the cleanup man that we're at one thirty right now. Because I mean, he's not facing no him. for old man. Is I mean, <laughs> faded fighters. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, no. yeah. So I mean, we hope. I mean, I mean, I hope Bell does reconsider that. But um, yeah, he faces Bell. He faces Purcell. We're look. I mean, we might get a fight of the year candidate out of it, depending on how much Valdez wants to really take. I mean, we'll get a fight of the year candidate for like the like biggest beatdown of the year. 
Yeah. This should have turned into like a, a monster fight, like an in a way fight, real quick. <laughs> oh god! Man, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I want to see it, but I'm kind of like, it, it, but who wants to see a bad car accident? Like, really? So I don't no, know. No. I mean, I don't mind seeing a bad car accident once, but I don't want to see it for the fifth time. <laughs> 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 Yo, we've been seeing like the same car accident like for like yeah. seven fights. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it's it's so bad that you can't look away, but then afterwards just like, okay, yeah. I'm You need to I'm let good. Lopez get another a crack at it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Mariaga shit. Lopez. <laughs> Facts were. So Lopez dropped it. <laughs> oh damn! Wow, damn, boy. I, 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 let me ask y'all this: the the, the close, close out this segment, um, starting with Keith, because I know he been following this whole top rank series for the summer. Um, what would you grade it on one through ten? The whole thing. Yeah, just the whole summer top rank fights, like. You know, the I mean, I've been entertained. I've been entertained. You know, I give it an eight. I've been happy. Word. All right. Word. I can respect that. That's a good answer. All right, that's I give it a seven myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't see it being lower than a five, honestly. No. I mean, that nigga be hating if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> you fuck that. I don't care about your damn fight of the years and upsets and. <laughs> You know, who, the, who the fuck are these niggas? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Is it Tuesday night fights <laughs> on USA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, same, I have the same thing with you, LB. I, like, I give it a seven too. Like, like definitely, like you appreciate the effort that they did to, you know, to, to get you know, to get the fight on there. And then, yeah, there was some, there were some uh ohs because you know fighters were catching COVID here and there, and some cards got messed up. You know, but uh, rescheduled. rescheduled, but we still got... never happened at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we still got some entertaining fights out of there, and then like you know, you appreciate the professionalism that everyone you know put on to to, to make the shit happen. And yeah, you, you got know, some stars too. You got some some new names emerge. And then plus the DJ too. I mean, the DJ. Yeah. Yes. Music, you know. That DJ was on a hundred, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he played, played I'm right Going Down. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> he played I'm Going Down when old dude, when the Kenyan got sent to the bushes, man. <laughs> savage. It was savage. Oh, shit. So long. <laughs> I was like, no, he didn't. Yeah. And just all the others, the uh, Hell on Earth, just, that's just a vibe. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, Top Ring, like, I didn't. I didn't really mind the whole show. Like the the setup, it's just a little overproduced. Sometimes you got all those commentators, and yeah, sometimes they try to stretch out the segments. But other than that, yeah. they trim the fat off a little bit, or let it stay on the grill a little longer. They, you know, they got something on point. They they have they got something. And if if you didn't really enjoy the series, man, I, I question your your boxing hardcore. You know, is yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not a hardcore fan if you if you can at least find something that you enjoyed about those cards. You. I mean, they're not a hardcore fans. They're the equivalent of Smack. Who is this nigga? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! The advanced casuals. <laughs> advanced casuals. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I think I know boxing. Um, I seen a gym once. Like, okay. <laughs> My, my uncle has some boxing gloves. I, I shadow boxed once. <laughs> I picked the boxer in Street Fighter. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, yo. but yeah, the, like I said, I mean, salute, salute top rank for that. And then obviously, you know, more more cards have been announced, which is of course a perfect segue into our final, you know, to our final segment of the evening. <laughs> 